Welcome back to the Ohio Bobcats Coaches Show with Jeff Bowles. I'm Justin Holbrock. Good to have you back, Coach. Justin, good to see you. Let's start with last Saturday. You guys up by 15 at halftime. Uh, they had 13 turnovers. You only had five. What do you think was the difference in that second half, though? Yeah, I think uh, you know we, we got off to another good start in, in right. uh, a game that we controlled pretty much the whole game. And you know that first price four to six minutes in the second half is what set the tone. And mm. Same thing happened game one against them. We were up 10 at halftime and uh, got off to a slow start second half. And the good thing about this game is we built another lead mm -hmm. uh, mid, middle, midway through the second half. And then down the stretch, you know, we had the lead going into last couple of possessions. You know, missed a free throw. They end up scoring two seconds to go and, you know, give him a credit. Big time shot by Justin Turner. It's hard taking positives in a loss, but we talked about needing to play better on the road, and you did, especially early on when it's hard to play in an environment like that. What did you see from the team that you liked on the road against a very talented Bowling Green team toward the top of the MAC? Yeah, I think you know, it was very encouraging. We, we didn't have London McDay, uh, right. sprained his ankle the day before, and, and uh, you know, guys came in and stepped up off the bench. And I think when you go in that environment, it was a great atmosphere. They're uh, celebrating a 2000 championship team, and, mm -hmm. and uh, you know, our guys did a good job competing, battling, and just came up a little short. One thing that stood out to me was that you guys only got to the foul line three times. They got there 11. How can you get there more and stress the importance of the number of times we get to the foul line, the easier it is that we're going to score more than 61 points? Yeah, we, you know, we did that last night against Buffalo, right. you know, which really helped us and didn't, didn't do that so much. And we did a great job guarding Justin Turner, the best player. He was two for 11, uh, hit two big buckets, one at the start of the second half, one at the very end of the second half. Yeah. And uh, you know, did a good job of that, but put him on the free throw line. And you know, that, that was probably the difference in the game. When you lose a game like that, you had fewer turnovers, you shot the ball pretty well. How is it to keep morale up? Because obviously you get back in the locker room, it can be hard getting on that bus ride back and just saying, all right, now we've got to go play another good Buffalo team, and you end up winning that game. What's the challenge of trying to keep morale up in that moment in the locker room? Yeah, I think that's, that's the biggest thing in sports. You know, you lose a game, you get knocked down, yeah. you know, how do you respond? Mm. And our guys all year long have done a great job responding. And, you know, we came in on Sunday, it was, you know, kind of, you know, weird day. The lights were out in the convocation center, <laughs> so we had to go to the rec center yeah. and uh, watch film, lift, do our uh, walkthrough over there. But our guys were in great mood. I mean, you know, and as a, as a head coach leader, you know, you want to try to pick them up and build their confidence up and, and credit to our guys for responding. For Buffalo, another game that you guys score 39 points in the first half. What is it about these starts? Because yesterday, an 18-0 run is almost unheard of on any basketball game. 39 points in the first half against them and BG. What is it about these games that you're starting so well? Yeah, we, we talked about setting the tone for the game. Yeah. And that first four-minute war that we talk about is, is big. And I didn't expect an 18-0 start, <laughs> but I'll take that every game sure. if we can get it. But our guys were moving the basketball. They did a good job defensively, uh, rebounding the basketball, which is a big key for us going in. Mm -hmm. Buffalo averaged 15 offensive rebounds a game. We held them to 11, mm -hmm. and uh, that, that start you know, really set the tone for the rest of the game. The lesson learned, though, from that Bowling Green game where you're up by 13 at half, and you keep it. I don't think they got closer than nine points in that second half. They had a lot of moments where they could have, but you guys played pretty good defense. What did that say about your team, what they learned in the Falcons game to do that against Buffalo? Yeah, you know, I came in at halftime and said, hey, look, do I need to yell and scream and, and you know, go crazy? Because yeah. we've been in this situation before and we haven't come out in the second half. And they said, hey, we got you. And you know, we actually, the day before, did a simulated halftime. Mm -hmm. you know, in the middle of practice, told the guys to go to the locker room for 10 minutes just to try to you know, simulate the halftime, come out, yeah. ramp the intensity up. And, you know, I thought we, we, uh, they made their run there to start the second half, but we, we bent, but we didn't break like we did you know, against BG. I'm sure you've noticed this, but held BG to 62 on Saturday, held Buffalo to 69. In seven of your last eight games, you've held teams to under 70 points. Big difference from the beginning of the year. What is it that's working on that side of the ball? Yeah, we just really emphasized it. If you go back to the Ball State game, you know, first half we let them do whatever they wanted to do. Second half we were more aggressive. And, I think we we're 284th in defense, and you know we just had to sit down and said, "Hey, this isn't good enough. This isn't going to win any games." Yeah. And I think now we're right around 200, you know, high hundreds. And from that three-week stretch, like you mentioned, our defensive intensity's been up, our rebounding's been really good, and you know the ball pressure's been key. Is that an effort thing? Is that a schematic thing? Both? Where does that come from? That difference? Yeah, I think it's a little bit of both. I mean, we kind of went back and re-emphasized, "Hey, we got to pressure the ball. We got to be in the gaps." Mm. And you know, once we started doing that, playing better team defense, you know, we limited what other teams wanted to do and took them out of you know their routine, their rhythm, of not just executing plays simply. This name will sound familiar. Ben Roderick from Olentangy Liberty dropped a career high 21. He went six for eight from 
three point. We talked about needing points off the bench. Maybe we didn't expect that, but what got into him last night? Yeah, it was great to see him hit his first shot. You yeah. know, anytime you're a shooter and you hit that first one, you gain confidence. Sure. And our, our, our team has confidence in him. They found him a couple more times. He hit three threes you know, in that 18-0 uh, run. Yeah. And uh, it was great to see him. He's, he's, you know, was injured earlier in the year, and, and now he's kind of hitting his stride. And what a great time to do it. I can't remember a game where someone other than Jason Preston had the most assists, but Ben Vanderplas had five. Sylvester had four. What's it like to see the big men get involved, and what does that do for your team when it's the bigger guys that have the most assists? Yeah, you know, teams are starting to game plan for Jason Preston. Right. Double teaming him, trying to get him to give up the basketball. You know, last night we threw the ball inside a lot. Ben Vanderplas was getting double teamed, made the right kick out, the right reads. Mm -hmm. You know, when you're making shots, everybody gets assists. And, you know, there's been some games where we probably should have more assists, but we didn't make the basket. But it's good to see those guys sharing the basketball. You now have won four of your last six. Bowling Green, obviously a one-point game, could have gone either way there. From the outside looking in, it seems like things have changed inside the program. Does it feel that way to you, and if so, why? I think the biggest thing is the growth process that we started from day one. You yeah. know, our, our goal from day one was to get better every day, become closer as a team every day. Mm. And that's all we really worried about. You know, we talk all the time to our guys. Two things you can control, control your attitude, control your effort. Mm -hmm. And our guys bring it every day. You know, they're great kids, they're fun to be around. And I think we've, we've gotten better every day and you know, we're hitting stride right now. All right, one of the plays that we're breaking down with Coach Bowl, something that we haven't done yet. It's breaking the press. It's a hard thing to do, especially when you have a team like Buffalo, good team, and they're trying to get back in the game with, with four minutes left and you guys are up by nine. So let's play this through. We'll stop it on the first catch here. Yeah, a lot of times, you know, when you're up in the late in the game, teams are going to press you. Mm -hmm. So ball control, taking care of it's going to be key. Know they're going to trap you. Biggest thing is to come to the basketball. There are a couple of situations, you know, in this game where we stood there and waited for the ball to come to us. We're, we almost turned it over. But here we inbound the ball to Jason Preston. Biggest thing is we want to try to find somebody in the middle here. Okay, Ben Vanderplas is going to circle here. The double team comes. You know, Jason Preston ends up making a great read, throwing the ball right to the middle. And then we'll stop it right there. Okay. So now Ben catches the ball in the middle. Obviously, we'd like to have him jump, stop to be under control. Sure. But now we got another outlet here, another outlet here, another outlet down the floor. So you got one, two, three, four guys. We beat the press. Right. Okay. You got 13 seconds on the shot clock. There was a timeout involved, so we had to get the ball crossed quickly on this one. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now you got numbers. You got four on one. We'll play that through right there. And then. On this possession, every single player touched the ball, too. It went from Jason, Ben started the play, then it goes to Jason, back to Ben. You had Sylvester get involved. You obviously had Jordan, and you had a finish by Ben Roderick at the very end. What's it like to see a press break and every single person touch the ball in that possession? Yeah, the, the fastest way to get the ball, of course, is the bypassing it. And if you really look at this whole play, there were two dribbles. Mm -hmm. and that was by Jason Preston, mm. you know, just to try to get out of the trap. Sure. And Ben catches it, throws it right to JD, who's open. So there's one, two, another pass over to Sylvester. Mm -hmm. A little dump down to Ben Roderick. You know, big play to extend the lead to 13. In a game 11. like this, how important is it when you, you have to break the press in order to keep the lead that you want? Because Buffalo could start getting back into this game the more turnovers they force. And you guys didn't have many turnovers yesterday. Yeah, that, that's big. They, they force a lot of turnovers. You know, one big key for us going in was to take care of the basketball, mm -hmm. which I thought we did a really good job throughout the course of the game. They really thrive on turning those turnovers into easy points. By them pressing right here, you know, you have to be solid with the basketball. You got to be ball strong. You know, a lot of times we look at a possession arrow, mm -hmm. okay, and we say, hey, it's our possession. So if you get a jump ball, don't panic. Mm -hmm. you know, we still re retain the ball. You know, we have two timeouts left. So time and score is really big. Mm. Knowing how many timeouts, knowing what the possession arrow is, all come into play, you know, late game. On a play like this where we'll go back through it, but when Ben gets the ball back at midcourt, if this were less time in the game, would he have stopped that play right there in order to maybe run some play clock off? Or the passes are open, let's go ahead and score. Yeah, the biggest thing is, you know, you look at the shot clock. Right. You know, if you get that ball across with 25, 24 seconds, mm -hmm. now you want to bring it back out, run another 10 to 12 off the clock. Gotcha. You know, but here we have numbers, it's four on one. You know, and, and you always tell you guys, hey, if it's a 100% sure layup, take it. Mm -hmm. If not, bring the ball back out, run clock, you know, make them play defense. 
going back to that point you made about turnovers, only had five in that game against Bowling Green, very few against Buffalo as well. It seems like that's one of the things that's changed as well, along with defense. What is it that, that's helped you guys improve in that category? Yeah, anytime you turn the ball over, you're not getting shots. Right. You know, you're just giving the uh, opportunity to the other team. So, you know, we always constantly preach it. Hey, simple plays, you know, hit, you know, baseball analogy, keep hitting singles, don't hit a home run play. Sure. And, you know, when you take care of the ball and you get shots, you know, you score more points and the better off you're going to be. Big game coming up against Kent State on Friday. You guys gave up, I think, 87 points the last time that you played them. What's going to be the difference in order to beat them? It's at home, so that's a benefit. It's senior day as well. But other than those things. Yeah, the you know, big thing is we got to go back and understand why they made 17 threes in that game. And, mm -hmm. you know, that was one game out of the six that I didn't think our ball pressure was very good. We let them do what they wanted to do. Mm -hmm. And when you let good teams, good shooters get comfortable getting into a rhythm, their offense flows freely and easily, you know, confidence is going to be up, they're going to make shots. This is a team known for the number of freshmen it has, but being senior day, what's your message to the guys that have been there for a long time? Yeah, I think, you know, number one, you know, play for the seniors. You know, it's Jordan Dardis, all-time leading three-point shooter in, right. in Ohio history. Uh, Fifth-year seniors, been through a lot of injuries. Mm -hmm. And then Sylvester Abanda, a young man that came to us from Georgia Tech as a grad transfer. Yeah. He's been really big for us, you know, especially lately. Uh, you know, defensively rebounding the basketball. Two great kids, and uh, you know, love to put them out with a win. Congratulations to those seniors, and, and we'll see if you can get the job done against Kent State on Friday. That game at 6:30. All right, that's it for the Ohio Bobcats Coaches Show with Jeff Bowles. We'll see you next week.